This video is about what affects supply and demand. <clears throat> this will help you with part of Unit 1, Learning Aim C and D. So what we're going to be trying to do is you will need to be able to describe how supply and demand works, just in general terms, a little bit of background. And then, specifically, you're going to identify and explain the factors which affect the demand in your market. So if you're doing the car market, you're looking at what factors affect demand in the car market. And similarly, you're going to be looking at explaining and identifying the factors that affect the supply in your market, so how many cars are produced. So that's what the purpose of this video is, so watch on. So we looked at in class um, the supply and demand of Freddo's, my favourite chocolate bar. And we found out that when we Freddo's were really cheap, all of us wanted one, and gradually as they got more expensive, less of us in the class wanted one, to the end it was only me who was the hardcore person who wanted one. So our demand curve slopes downwards. At a high price we demand less, at a low price we demand loads. So then we looked at the supply, and thinking it from a business's point of view, if the price was low, not many people would make Freddo's. There wouldn't be many Freddo's out there. But as the price creeps up and Freddo's become more and more popular, more and more will be produced. So what we're looking at is where these two lines cross. This is called the equilibrium. And this will set the price, here we have as P, at 25P, and the quantity Q that is produced. So we'll all pay 25p for our Freddos and we will get this amount of Freddos in the market. And that is pretty much supply and demand in about five seconds. So what we are thinking about is, this is just theory, we are going to be looking at, in actual facts, what factors do affect the supply and demand in your market for your business that you're going to be researching. So we're going to be starting off by looking at the demand, shifting the demand line to the right. We are increasing demand. See, it's moved. And this will mean that the price and the quantity have increased. So we're going to be looking at the factors that move this line. And there are a few. And what your job is, is to pick out which ones are relevant to you and which ones are irrelevant to you. So let's have a look at number one, increasing income for normal goods. So if we all have more money, we will be increasing the demand for all goods. So if I have more disposable income, I will go on holiday more, I will buy more clothes, I will eat more Freddo's, I will go to restaurants more, things like that. Increasing income for normal goods should make the demand curve shift to the right. Now, at the moment, um, anyway, that's fine. So the other thing is, if we have decreasing income, we're talking about inferior goods. The things that we will buy if we have less money. So if I have less money, I might buy more own brand goods, or I might go to Poundland more. So if the population has got a decreasing income, we might increase the demand for some of the goods. So if you've got an inferior good, we're looking for decreasing income. If you've got a normal good, you're looking for increasing income. The third reason is the rising price of substitutes. So if you remember a substitute product, it's not the same product, but it's something that satisfies the same need. So if, for instance, um, the price of um, going bowling goes up, a substitute for bowling might be going to the cinema. It's a little bit of light entertainment. So if the price of bowling goes up, it will increase the demand for going to the cinema. Or if the price of pasta goes up, it will increase the demand for rice. So think about what your substitute products are. Is there a substitute 
where we can look at the price of it. So if I was doing cars, a substitute might be public transport. So if the cost of public transport goes up, therefore, cars might be increased in demand. Right, number four, a falling price of complements, a complementary good is something that goes with. So if cars, a complementary good is petrol. So a falling price in petrol might put up the demand for cars. Um, a falling price in printer ink might put up the demand for printers. And you can see that printer companies use this by decreasing um, the value of printers to increase the um, sales of printer ink. And finally, very importantly, is your business, do they shift demand by effective advertising. So when we're looking at Nike and Adidas and all of that lot, they are shifting their demand curve to the right purely by advertising. They are putting up the price that we will pay and the amount that is um, going to be supplied. So that is looking at shifting the demand curve to the right. So now we are considering shifting the demand curve to the lift, left. What decreases demand? So we're shifting it downwards and that will result in a lower price and a lower quantity. Hmm. Not good circumstances, but things we need to look out for. So we have a change in consumer tastes and preferences away from the product. So, um, at the moment, because of COVID, there has been a change in consumer tastes and preferences away from public transport. So we have seen a shift to the left of the demand line for public transport. Conversely, the shift to the right because of COVID is for garden furniture. We all demand more garden furniture because we've all been staying at home and pubs have been putting outside places. So a shift to the left is if we don't want it anymore like DVDs, we don't want those either. Now, a rise in interest rates leading to a fall in demand for products bought on credit. So do you know what? Is your product one that is bought on credit? Do we borrow to buy it? We're talking about cars, we're talking about houses, we're talking about some forms of, forms of furniture. So if interest rates go up, buying anything on credit seems more expensive. So this will cause a fall in demand. So when interest rates go up, we will buy those items less on credit. So if you have an item which is bought on credit, be aware of that. Now, number three is about us predicting the future. If we think there is going to be a reduction in price in the future, we will delay our purchases. So, now, with iPhones, a bit of an odd one, really, because I expect to have a fall in prices in the future for most iPhones. So as I'm not particularly fussed about iPhones, I'm going to delay my purchase, which would shift the demand curve this way. However, thinking about shifting the demand curve to the right, the slide before, do you know what? By advertising, they have created a need for the product. So it's a bit of a playoff between the two of those. Um, we've got number four, which is a rise in unemployment in a recession. So that's for normal goods. When we have less disposable income, we will buy less of everything. And number five, when we've got a rise in the exchange rate, which makes an import more, uh, an import cheaper. So um, say, for instance, if I was Boohoo, who made clothes in the UK, the UK exchange rate changes and it makes imports cheaper. So Boohoo, even though they are cheap, would be struggling against places like Primark who are importing their goods and they've just become cheaper because of the exchange rate changing. So finally, we're looking at shift in the supply curve. So where we have it moved, and obviously we have 
either raising prices or lowering prices, depending on which way it's shipped. So we're thinking about being the businesses and what is going to make them supply more or less. Now, we've got five reasons here. You've got to think about which ones apply to your businesses. So, for instance, technology. Better technology will shift um, the curve to the right. And so, e.g., robots, etc. So, um, more will be um, um, de developed because perhaps robots have made it cheaper or um, more efficient and therefore it's easier. And when we're thinking about perhaps the car market, technology has allowed cars to be built more quickly and more cheaply, and therefore technology has supply, increased the supply of cars. Um, so another thing that could happen, if the production of one product so a component or a related one, then the supply of another one will. At the moment, there is a world shortage of the computer chips that go into cars. So because there is a shortage of one product, of course, they cannot produce the cars because the cars are because the cars require the chips. So a fall in supply of one good knocks on to a fall in supply of another good. If we were looking at Starbucks, for instance, a fall in the supply of coffee might result in a reduction in Starbucks. If we're thinking about bumper harvests, um, so you know the weather really does affect us. Um, this year is a terrible harvest for asparagus because it's been so cold. So that was created a reduction in supply. Um, we've got expectations. If the seller expects the price to be higher in the future, they will store their goods. So, for instance, if I am selling a house and I am expecting house prices to be higher in the future, I might hang on to my house and reduce the supply because I'm expecting it to be worth more in the future. And the final reason is subsidies and taxes. So, if our government gives us money to produce something. We're going to produce that rather than another thing. So if the government is subsidising the growth of apples and not the growth of pears, I as a farmer, I'm going to go, oh, I'm going to grow apples, I'm not going to grow pears. So subsidies, think government actions can affect the supply of goods in the market. So your job now is to think about what factors affect the demand in your market and what factors affect the supply in your market. Good luck.